Good morning. How are you all? It's Wanda here again. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this morning's tarot. How are you all this morning? I hope that your day has started if you're in Australia and in this time zone, New Zealand, and um, your day has begun. Um, it, I hope that today is beautiful for you. And for those of you who are um, experiencing the night and you've had your day, um, I hope you have a beautiful evening. And you'll all notice, hello everybody who's hopping on. Welcome, welcome. I'm sorry for the delay. I had a little bit of a delay trying to get um, live this morning. I think this is going to be a consistent problem, especially in the space where I'm living right now. Um, everybody sort of experiencing a lag in communication in terms of uh, the the technology that we have. So if you're hopping on right now, say, hi, Wanda, how are you? Um, let me know uh, where you're hopping on from. And if you have a question for me, um, yesterday I had the biggest disaster. I, I wasn't able to, well, it's not the biggest disaster, but um, I wasn't able to um, hop on uh, on the time that I had hoped. So my technology was a little bit funny and so I thought, you know what, I'm not even in the space for delivering um, the tarot. So I let it go. So yesterday, Wednesdays is usually um, my, um, what do you call it? Wednesdays is usually my question and, and answer. So if you do have a question for me, pop it in and um, I'll just say sorry and apologize up front if I miss it because sometimes I don't see it in the feed so those of you who are going who've done lives before will know what I'm talking about but those of you who haven't done lives then um, there's a, like a little message section that slides up and down and sometimes it gets stuck and I can't move it and unfortunately that's the technology at the minute and it's even harder if you're on the phone so um, Anyway, so if you've got a question for me, by all means, um, type it in the comments box and I hope to get to it. Now, I'm going to read for you today because I missed yesterday and, of course, we've got the, the full moon going on. Now, my curiosity is I've been talking to my husband about this and my uh, my team members and, and I thought it was just me. I have a question for you. Have you been feeling like sensing the energy of like, I feel like, you know, when you've got a whole bunch of marbles in your hand and you're shaking them and then you let them out. And I feel like my marbles are all over the place. And as much as I'm trying to bring them in and as much as I'm doing my best to center myself, and to stay calm and calm the mind and do my breathing. As soon as I have finished the, the breathing or my meditation and I start my day, I'm, I'm back to where I started. So this has been happening to me for the last few days. And so I thought there must be something that I'm integrating on another level that I'm probably not um, consciously aware of. So I'm just letting it go. Um, for the now and just being in in this space right now giving my body time and my and my consciousness time to catch up if you like whatever that means and whatever that looks like so I'm listening very carefully to my body and just being where I need to be at this moment and that's that has been helpful so in today reading I'm, I'm wanting to talk to you very quickly about everything is you pushed out what does that mean Neville Goddard talks about that everything is you pushed out so when I talk to people they very often and I've been uh, mind you I'm guilty of this too when I talk to my clients when I'm doing the tarot cards and, it, and if I'm doing some counseling right um, they very often say, oh, it was this happened and this person when it was like this and she was doing that and he said this and he was like that and you're making that other person wrong. And you could have another person, you go, oh, that person's fabulous and they're so giving and they're so kind 
and um, I really love being around that person's energy and the truth of the matter is is that all the negative people and all the positive people in your life are very simply reflections of yourself right they're reflections of you the good the bad the ugly and even the ones that you believe that you're not because there is some belief or there is some reflection of yourself within that because if there is a reaction positive and negative both both ways if there is a reaction from you then that is demonstrating something that requires healing for you now I've written a little sheet here in my book does that make sense I want to talk to you about that so look at this everything is you pushed out can you see that so outside in your outside world everything is a reflection and very often as human beings we judge judge ourselves I, I am the, the master of my own judgment right and here we have negative and positive so when we when we go into a negative space about somebody if you're talking about somebody or oh, she did this and she did that and he did this and he said that then you're coming from a space of I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy there is something within yourself that someone said to you when you were a child or um, that you thought that you were that and that somewhere deep within your subconscious um, caves you know if you imagine inside your body you've got these caves and inside every little cave is is a thought that you have about yourself that does not serve you and so when we are doing the spiritual work or when we are doing the work to to level up to become who we really are which is your divine self whatever that looks like your divine signature the, this stuff comes up and and you can't just push it away um, you have to deal with it and how you deal with it is this you question it you question and that's positive so if you hear yourself speaking oh god that person's a bitch I can't what, what kind of a person is she you know <clears throat> If you hear yourself saying that or even thinking it, ask yourself, question yourself and say, hmm, what's that saying about me? What's, what's that reflecting in me? Am I like that? Has somebody in my past said that to me? Has somebody made me feel like I'm inferior? Has somebody said to me, gee, you know, you're not worthy of that. You know, and, and if you question it, you can you can heal it. You know, and if it's that inner child, if it if it's that, then you can say, you know, I forgive you. I, I forgive the person who said it and, and I forgive you. You can quite easily go into the hop and open o prayer. You know, people don't like the word forgive because they think that if they forgive that they're allowing that person to get away with what they've done. And it's not like that at all. Forgiving is means just letting go of it because it will hurt you more than it hurts the other person. The other person who said it probably can't even remember that they said it, you know, because they were reflecting or projecting their shit onto you at that time. Does that, and you've taken it in, you've absorbed that and gone, oh my God, I'm, I'm vain or I'm, um, I'm vain or I'm, um, uh, what's that other word for vain you know like I love myself but you know back in my day when I was young the the college girls used to say oh you love yourself you're so up yourself you know and in a negative context and so you might feel that there's a certain level of you inside your cave in your subconscious in your body in your emotions that needs healing and so when that comes up and, and you're being judgmental about somebody you're you you are being every, everybody everything is you pushed out so it's a reflection of a belief that you have that you have absorbed when you were younger and it's that's all it is and you have the power to change that you don't even have to be that 
you might not even think that you are that but when that comes up and it creates a trigger and you go oh god she's a bitch or gee she's up herself that is something reflected back at you because someone made you feel that way when you were younger so all you need to ask is well what hang on what can i learn <laughs> I'll work this way better so what can you learn from that and what needs the healing and very often it just needs a little bit of love. It just needs a little bit of compassion because, you know, like when you're my age, for instance, and you're dealing with this stuff and it's coming up, then you deal with it in such a way you go, here it comes. Okay, so what's that mean for me? When was a time? You don't need to go into full analysis. You just make sure you feel it. Just feel it and just be with the feeling until it goes and just give it some attention. Okay, because maybe there might have been a time in your in your younger years when you wanted that attention and you didn't get it. I mean, consider when kids act out, they're wanting that attention. You know, what do you need right now? So when my granddaughters, for instance, start carrying on, rather than me going now, you know, like I used to do when I was a teacher, I just go up to them and go, what do you need right now? What is it that I can do for you right now? What, what is it you want to say? What, what, what is it that you need? And very often they just look at me and go, nothing. I don't, nothing, Oma. I love you or, you know, I want to go play outside or something like that. So ch change, change it. And so when we look at our negative experiences or our judgments about, our, about others, we are actually judging ourselves. Good morning, everyone who's hopped on. I hope this is making sense. So you start to take on the idea that every is you pushed out if you if you take that on and go well, what has the world to reflect um, to me about myself and the judgments that I have inside the caves that are starting to come up now because I'm wanting to be this better version of myself I don't want to be in lack anymore I don't want to live in scarcity anymore I don't want to I don't want to be this person who's moaning and groaning every five minutes about how shit my life is. And when, when you start to look at it like everything is you pushed out and you start to think, well, how can I shift that? And everything in your world is a reflection of who you are, the good, the bad and the ugly. So in the negatives, that comes up from I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy or, or it could come up like I'm vain, you know, I'm a selfish person. Um, you know, I treat others badly, you know, you naughty person, Those that kind of shit we had when we were younger. And so, of course, as we're younger, we take that in. We embody it. We embody it. We think, oh, my God, I'm so bad. I'm such a bad person. And that one thought, that one idea, that one emotional feeling, that one emotional concept that you created as part of your ego at the time is most definitely not true. It's just an experience that you had and to rise up. So when it comes up as an adult, and look at it from a positive way. When you start judging somebody, like I said before, all right, so I've said this for three times now. When I said this before, what can I learn here? Ask that question. If you're, if you're complaining about somebody, ask, what can I learn here? What can I learn about myself? And, and I've been complaining about um, a situation like with my with my accounting at the moment, and um, a lot of unworthiness is coming up. And and I'm and I, I can either take action on it in a negative way, or I can take action on it to create a boundary, or I can take action on it to go feel the feels and just be with the feeling. And it, it is uncomfortable, you know, because it makes me, uh, I, I was doing that yesterday and um, I was thinking, oh, my God, so, okay, what is this telling me about me? Am I that kind of a person? Am I that kind of a person that if I've got too much in my head, I'm not available for those who truly need me at that time? If I'm the kind of person who's too much in my head because I'm worried about getting this done, getting that done, you know, and trying to get all my appointments done and I'm not present and I'm not in the moment, am I then not available for the people who deserve me more than what I'm creating in my head? Does that make sense? 
And so therefore you can start questioning and you don't need to go down that dark tunnel of I'm oh, not good enough and it takes you days to get back on top of things again. So yeah, so my brain is a bit scattered at the moment. I'm going, oh, okay, and I'm just going with it. All right, so that's why I wasn't on yesterday. So now the cards. So I'm no longer looking at... Um, when I, I, I no longer start mulling and mooing inside my own head now. And I'm starting to really, really embody. I'm uh, not starting to. I am embodying all that is and understanding that also that um, whenever anything negative comes up, I go, okay, so what's this saying about me? Even if your car's wheels, you know, like I had an issue with my the car's wheels the other day and I was questioning to myself, what's my car telling me about me? Is there something in my health that I'm not addressing? Is there something, and you can look at it and go, oh, look, it's just the car's wheels. But okay, everything in the world, material, people, emotions, everything is a reflection of what's going on with me. And so therefore, if I look at it from that point of view, I can then, oh, wow, okay, this is these two cards came up. Okay, so here it is. These two cards just fell out. So I'm going to read it right now. The first card that showed up was the Nine of Swords. And the Swords are about the mind. The Nine is about endings. And if you look at that picture, it says it all. What are you worried about? What are you, what are you worried about right now? What's, you know, that little back um, computer program inside you that's going, yeah you haven't done this and you haven't done that no, 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 no. and it's like a little program that's going on and on and on you feel like you're chasing your tail and you're going oh I'm so over it you know like I, what can I do to change changes and here we have the second card which is the six of pentacles and the six of pentacles is about giving but it's mostly giving material things it's about um contributing you know like go fund me it's about um donating all right so what are you worried about are you worried about your money are you worried about the fact that oh my god my I, 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 that, that i can really get that because that's me right now oops that's me right now um so that's reflecting definitely me is it reflecting you are you worried about um, money coming to you are you worried about not having enough are you worried about um, needing to fork out more money because this worrying about it will not serve you and I, I know that I know it up here but I'm not feeling it in here does that make sense so that's very very important that you understand that this up here and this down here are two different things and so your this part here within you is at the magnet so the more worry that you have inside yourself the more worry that you're going to create for yourself um, the more the more negative that you'll create because you are the master of your absolute total reality at every moment so these cards are reflecting that there's worry about money so what can you do it's up to you but I would go okay so what am I worried about and ask that question what am I actually worried about and think about it maybe close your eyes and go hmm, okay it's about that all right what can I do about it right now well I can spend less I can perhaps um, consider taking some action you know maybe looking at things where I can budget a bit better until you get that or go for something that you really desire go for something that you really want so these cards fell out and when I don't take it from the top and they fall out they're speaking in full version and I know yesterday um, for me I'll give you an example okay so um, I've got the retreat center here I'm going to show you what I've been doing so far I'll probably do another live a little bit later today and um, anyway so I I was at, something said to me go to the garden center go to the garden center. I'm going oh I've got so much work to do I've got time to go to the garden center but my soul was saying go to the garden center so I went to the garden center and there were these two beautiful Balinese statues now you know like like do I have the 
money to do this kind of thing not at the moment because I am pretty you know like chunking out this and this and this for the minute anyway um, I'm thinking do I need it I actually had to stand in the garden because my mind's going no 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 and my soul's going yes 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 so I stood in the garden and I actually put my hand there I had my handbag on one shoulder I'm like so I'm going okay so do I need these would, would they serve the purpose of what I'm trying to create and it was a big hell yes so I said to the guy if I buy two of them um, will I get a discount he goes sure but great he goes I'll be back in a second I went all right so I got a $25 discount now okay that's not a whole heap you know but look it was fine and those statues when I put them there it just created a different energy so um, anyway, that's just a little story. Now, those cards for you. So your, your feelings of lack, what's going on there? Now, I'm just going to quickly go through and have a look and see if anyone's got a question for me. Hang on, I'll start from the top. Hello, everybody who's joined. Hello, everybody who's gone. <laughs> Goodbye to everybody who's gone. Um, okay, so let's have a look. How are hi, Helen Dulls? Joe, how are you, darling? Carol? Mary, how are you? Jenny Gazola, big love to you, darling. How are you? Hang on, are you asking me a question? Okay, here we are. Will I find? Will I find a lady? Well, you know what? Are oh, you watching from Adelaide? Let's have a look. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Jenny, hang on a sec. Will you find a lady? Ask yourself this question. Are you available? Are you available? And I'm not talking about are you available for a date, but are you emotionally available to bring in that energy? Because if she's not there, you're not looking, right? And I'm not looking with your eyes. I'm saying you're not a vibrational match right now, Jenny. So that's what I'm getting. So you have to be the energy of attraction so are you being a person are you being a person <clears throat> are you being a person who someone would be attracted to so look at it from the other point of view so if you're there standing there and you were a woman would you go oh this is a really nice guy I'm going to go and say hello you know what would, what would you expect a woman to do ask yourself that question because people don't pop out of nowhere you know they really really don't unless you are a vibrational match to what you're wanting ah okay now Jenny I'm telling you now you got the seven of swords and the seven of swords is about changes coming up around your relationships and that means you need to change you need to change so what is it that you're not available for because if you're not available even for the emotional side you're just going to attract more shit of what you've had in your past so what I'm saying to you is this right these changes are about the mind it's your mindset that needs a shift you need to shift when you love yourself more when you appreciate yourself more when you are open when you are available then you won't get triggered and you'll be able to be more present to the person you're calling in I hope that makes sense to you darling I hope let me know if it does or if it doesn't and if it's triggering you and you're getting the shits with me know that I've told you the truth because every time we get the shits with something that's when there's a an, 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 element, an element of truth in that and it doesn't mean you're a bad person it, it all it means is that um, you haven't healed that part yet from your past what I was talking about before that everything in your everything is you pushed out all right I'm having a look for more questions that was a really good question though um, Jenny I'm telling you now Dulce. Uh yes reading and working through the book the three magic words I love that book oh my god I love it I love it and I love the meditation that Wayne Dwyer does with that too. Wayne Dyer I, I mean hello darling Marie morning sunshine yes I well you know yes I'm the sunshine with a few clouds over it at the moment but I'm, I'm perfectly fine as it is I'm not trying to push anything away okay are there any more questions people I am going through these right now okay Kalisha okay um, 
accept what is now. You're expecting somebody to be there for you and you're not doing it for yourself, right? That is, you have to then accept the what's so and allow this new version of you to come through. And, you know, people go, oh, yeah, but I'm allowed to be sad. I'm allowed to do that. Well, okay, you can be sad forever. You can be moaning forever. And, and then give yourself that time. But if it's going beyond a certain time where it's not serving you anymore, you have got such a wonderful future ahead of you. And if you want to go back to that old pattern and think that you've lost something, you haven't lost anything. You've gained the understanding that I don't want this relationship anymore. I wanted that bit, but I didn't want the other bit. So that's not for you serving you right now. And that's why you at that space right now. So what I'm going to ask you to think about is, well, thank you for showing me what I don't want. Thank you for showing me what I actually do want in my life. And that then reflects back to you and you go, this is who I have to be. Are you available for the new? Rather than spending days, you know, feeling like you've lost something when actually you have gained it. I hope that makes sense for you. I'm going through, I'm going through. Let's have a look. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly, I'm going through all your messages. Yes, uh, hi, Sharon. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Look, that's absolutely right. And, you know, like I, I get readings from people. Uh, I get requests for readings and people will know when is my person, when is my lover coming to me and all this kind of thing. And if you look, and we want that because we, we, we like being a teddy bear, you know, we're, we're feeling insecure and we are not feeling like that. Oh my god, I was the most insecure nut job this side of the black stump when I was younger because, in my mind, I had to have success there or I had to have success in some kind of a relationship, and so therefore that was on my agenda the whole time. And it's a waste of time, it is such a waste of time. And instead, spirit was saying, go here, learn about Reiki, do this, learn about cards, do that. Spirit was showing it, and I did it anyway. And what I was learning was more about me. And when I discovered, when I finally came to the realisation that I am all there is, I am that, so I decided to marry me. I married myself. And I didn't do any huge ceremony. You know, I just picked a ring that I had, you know, like a crystal in it. It was a citrine ring. I sometimes wear it, not often anymore because when I'm with the paints and everything, you know, my jewellery get all tarnished. So I don't wear the jewellery very often anymore. But I had that ring and I married myself. And I took myself out to the forest, went for a walk, and I said, Wanda, I love you so much. And with this ring, I be wed. You are the best person. I married myself. And when I did that, I swear it, it was crazy. Within months, I, I met my husband. Yes, we've had problems. You know, we've, we've had huge problems. I'm such an independent person, right? And he went through his own shit last year. And now we're back together. We're back together with a new direction and a new understanding of who we both are. And the toler we tolerate that now, or we don't even have to tolerate it anymore. We accept it. We accept that that's who he is. I accept more myself. I accept him. And we both choose to work in this relationship together as partners in life, right? So that is where the power is, my friends. That is where the power is. And so you can call it the twin flame. You know, there's so many. I don't know if my husband's the twin flame. All I know is that he is my best friend. And I have lots of girlfriends who are my best friends. But this is the guy I live with. This is the guy I connect to. This is the guy I pull my soul to and vice versa now, you know. And it has to work 
both ways. There may come a time in my life or his life where we decide to go separate ways, but we're not there now. We, we don't have to be. So, you know, the idea that we got to stay with somebody for the rest of our lives is bullshit, right? It absolutely is. And if you are divorced once, twice, three times, four times, people look at that and go, there's something wrong with you. Well, maybe there is a little bit. But you're learning as you go. And the thing is, people come into your lives, you connect with them, you have a relationship with them. Some people have lots of relationships and they don't get married. That doesn't get talked about, does it? It's only the people who get married and make that commitment and it gets stuffed up and it doesn't work. You, you know you know what I mean? So don't let that stop you. You know, you don't need a twin flame. You know, some people are, um, I don't even want to call it lucky, some people work with a twin flame. I suppose if you want to call it that way, it's like the ultimate of relationships. Is it really? I'll tell you a story, okay? And, and, I'll, and, and I'll finish the cards for now. But I want to tell you a story. I hope that you can understand that sometimes our own thinking about relationships is so out of whack that, that we, we find we just can't even, you know, um, that, that that's something out of our reach and there's scarcity there. Now, look, I'll tell you a story. Okay. So um, this couple uh, that I know, they met at university. They were both studying different degrees. They, they fell in love with each other. Um, they were together for lots of years. They finished their degree. They went travelling together. Um, they had, I think, two or three years overseas working and working together and travelling together and having a ball. They came back to Australia and she started a job and he started a job and somehow or another they sort of like went their own direction, okay, and they split up. And she went there and he went there. And years later, like 20 20 years later, 20 years later, they meet up at a common at a, at a mutual friend's funeral. That part that was the same age as them. I think they were in their 40s by this stage. Was it 20 years earlier? That's right. They were in their 40s, and they they connected again, and and they talked, and yet yeah, he got married, got divorced, had kids. She got married, got divorced, had kids. And now they've remarried. So they've remarried and they're, and they're as happy as Larry. And we look at that and go, oh, that's, you know, what do you think about that? You know, is that possible? Yeah, it is. So, you know, oh, get out of that mindset that, you know, don't worry about the fact that you need a twin flame, right? You don't need to have that perfect, partner because you're stopping yourself from learning right and you will you will unconsciously subconsciously call somebody in to give you the greatest lessons and that is what we're here to do have this human experience have this human experience and um live that life and you know other people can think what they think and that's not your responsibility they can think about you what they want what's more important is what you think about you that's the most important and so what if you're married five five six times what's that mean for you it has to be more important how you show up what you've learned from it and love that learning love it and stop blaming the other person because you called them in for the lessons you designed this yourself Right? You don't remember it because you're here right now in this reality, but you certainly orchestrated and designed your life before you came in to this body here on planet Earth. And so if you start appreciating everybody, even if it was a yuck experience, if you start working in that level and appreciating the fact that everything that's happened to you is for you, even in relationships, then you'll definitely view world in a different way so I hope that's made sense to you don't worry about giving names to your twin flame and then your friends are going oh he's my twin flame oh my god I just love him or her whatever the case may be 
go and embrace the relationships and then decide is this relationship for me or not am I willing to give it a try or not am I available for learning or am I so scared about getting my heart broken again that I'm too scared to even give it a go and if that's you then hang back because you're going to be creating I've got lots women who I do cards for who sabotage their relationships because they're working on an old program I'm such a bitch I can't make anything work and so I'm going to sabotage and test out this partner until I, I strain him till the nth degree until he turns around and goes I can't do this anymore right see you later lovey and you go oh I told you I got the whole relationship and then you go back into this stupid spiral it's ridiculous so watch and know yourself and know that when you are sabotaging something I hope that makes sense for you so let go of the past let go oh my god I got a call coming up I'll talk to you later I think I've waddled on long enough you know I love you you know I see to serve you if you want a personal soul reading with me then you know what to do PM me in the meantime Neville Goddard is in the comments box say hello to me share it if you think this is helpful and i'll see you tomorrow bye